So in lesson three, this is um, your chance to, to create your own freehand piece. Now this is not as scary as it sounds, believe me. So to start with, we need a frame to work in. So you're as well clicking on your hoop. This way you know, you know you're working within the hoop that you're going to stitch out. So we've got the hoop again, just going for the 100 millimeter square. So instead of doing this in the default black, what we're going to do in effect is draw our own backdrop and then use this as a background to trace our finished piece from. So we're going to go down to the settings here and instead of view stitches, click on that again, we're going to say view outlines. So you then start seeing this more as you would in a drawing program. So what we need to do is um, go back to our running stitch and we're going to select a square. Now we're going to do this and I'm going to use this kind of fuchsia pink. So this gives me a nice base to work from so I can then see when I'm tracing over the top of this. So we're just going to And draw a square. I'm going to take it down to here because again we'll use our little trick of uh, going out of frame. So we're just going to move this around till we're happy with the, the size of the frame we want and the composition. So I'm going to pull this down so I've got a mushroom just peeking out the top there and click off that. So there we have, this is just a guide for our frame. I'm going to go back to the running stitch and we're going to go back to the freehand. And at this point it doesn't matter the stitch length because again this is just a guide. Now feel free to have a picture in front of you but the easiest way to do this, if we think about mushrooms, we're going to do a big one in the background and two smaller ones in the front. So I'm going to just think about this as a triangle. And then at the side I'm going to do another triangle slightly overlapping the first triangle. And again another triangle slightly overlapping. So what we're doing here is the biggest triangle here we've sent that to the back and these two are going to be in the forefront of the image. So the caps of the mushrooms we can now draw on. So again just go for triangles. And we'll do the ones that are sitting in the forefront of the image. And then we can fit the back one in here. And just have that slightly peeking out the top. So it's, this one's looking a bit wonky. So what I'm going to do is go back step there. I think this background one actually needs to sit in the middle there a bit. So as you can see I'm sketching this like I would if I was um, doodling it on a bit of paper. So we now have our group of three mushrooms. This one's going to sit in the back and these two are going to sit in the front. So you can treat this like a layer. Again, in your, your layers here we can delete as we need. So if you're brave you can either um, sketch on top of this or you can just refine your image a bit. So again, 
choose a colour that's not black, something you can still see over the top. So we'll go for the purple. Now these two caps, we can round the edges off a bit. And this is just a, a refining kind of stage. Again, this this is not a layer that's going to be stitched. So from there, just put a little bend in your stock. This one could bend a bit that way. And then your top one you can make whatever shape you want. So when you think about it, to stop it being scary, all you've actually created here is a square and six triangles and you've made a nice little composition. So we can take this from the, the side and add a couple of bits of grass. You can even go a couple of bits of grass in front of that one and a couple to the side. And you notice these have uh, changed onto the pink, which really doesn't matter because um, it's just all sketchy stage. And the frame, as you're going round, you can either keep it straight or you can put in a couple of little wiggles there. And there we have it. We've now got your, your backdrop. So go back to your layers and you'll see how this is all broken up, but it's fine. It's, um, we're going to be deleting this later anyway. So at this point, your very first layer, select that and then delete. And then that gives you a clearer view of what you're awaiting to do next. And now it's time to just uh, do what we've done for the last two lessons. We're just going to select running stitch again. This time, go for the smallest stitch. Select black and one to three. And uh, do exactly as we've done in the previous lessons. So I'm actually going to go back into layers and we're going to lock this layer so we don't end up attaching any pieces of it as we're, we're doodling the top layer. So make sure snap to anchor is on and uh, select your running stitch. And let's just go for it. Doodle noodle as much as uh, you like. And these are just really fun pieces. They're so simple and so quick. And like I said in the previous lesson, they do actually stitch out really quite nice. And um, make nice little gifts if you so wish but they're also just a nice way to practice to not feel any pressure to get things right because the rule is there is no rules so we'll go just really sketchy on this have a bit of fun And this one, um, 
I'm going to do I'm going to applique these as well, the raw edge applique and finish with intense pencils if any of you have been on the Facebook group you might have noticed um, it's one of my favourite things to do raw edge applique mixed with intense pencils and what we're doing here, I mean I've done a few versions, it's taken a few hours to achieve but this is the basic principle so if you can do this you can pretty much do any of them and hopefully by this stage now that you're on lesson three you'll be a lot more confident with just chucking in these outlines without uh, stressing about getting things perfect big doodle noodle at the top of this one and this is just the the basics of uh, any illustration I do, I usually start with um, a rough sketch and then refine my rough sketch and usually that takes me to my finished um, piece of outline, sometimes depending Depending what I'm doing, there can be a few more stages, but as a rule, this is the basic principle of um, every piece of artwork I do. So we're going to go back to one to one. And at this stage, we're then going to go back into layers and um, select your purple and unlock it. If you remember we locked it, make sure it's selected and none of the black selected and just delete that layer as well. That's it. And delete and you're left just with your, your black outline layer. And go back down to settings and you can then go back to view stitches in your 3D view. And there we have the, uh, this looks no different from the pieces I've um, I've provided you in the last two lessons. Hopefully you've just now achieved your first very own freehand piece. So I'm now going to quickly add the outlines for the applique. Now it's up to you, you can um, either stitch this out as it is and uh, you can use your intense pencils to colour it all. Um, I'm going to applique all the tops and use the intense on everything else. So again, select my brush and change the colour so my machine knows that um, so I can stop the machine between the colours. And just very quickly draw around the outside of these. So this is my um, placement stitch. So again, I'm going to oh, sorry, I'm going to go into layers and select all of these. And I'm going to duplicate and paste. So you'll now see that uh, the top three that are selected are the original placement stitch. 
and then we'll have the next three here. Now, if you're doing them uh, all in the same fabric, select all three and change the colour. But I wish to do different fabrics. Now, if you lay down a piece of fabric, as long as you put all your three fabrics and they're not overlapping, that's fine. But you can uh, change these to individual colours, so if it makes it easier, stitch them all separately. Then just allocate a different colour to the last three. I mean, you can leave this one just the red, so that's in your layers, that's given you your three placement stitches, so you don't need to do them separately, you just need to know where you need to place your fabrics. So once you've placed the fabric, you can then name, follow through the sequence, of stitching them down. And obviously, if we deselect that, select your black and send it to the last place on your layers so it's the last piece that's going to stitch. Back to one to one and that's you now done your very first freehand piece and added all your applique to the top. So we're now going to save this and uh, we'll transfer it to the machine and uh, see how this stitches out and then we can have some fun with some coloured pencils. Remember to allocate your thread to black and sew down your placement stitches. Then place down your fabric and trim down the tack down stitch and then trim around the edge. Repeat that process again until all three caps of the mushrooms have got the appliqued fabric. You should now have an image that looks like this and we're all ready to go and play with some coloured pencils. So I'm now going to do a very quick demonstration on uh, using some of the Inktense pencils. I also have a few other things here. So things I recommend you need for this is a um, small cup of water, a, a tiny bit of sponge, a paintbrush and your Inktense pencils. I also have some just plain watercolour pencils. These are not a uh, waterproof so these are more for just doing pictures if you're doing t-shirts or anything that needs to go through the wash use your ink tense pencils uh, equally i have some of these watercolor pens as well so i'm just going to experiment with all of these things but as i say if it's an item that's in a garment that's going to be getting washed use the ink tense because they're color fast so We'll start with the, the background of the mushrooms. So we're just going to take a paintbrush and work around the mushrooms. You don't have to be too precise about this. You're just trying to dampen the fabric around here so we can uh, blend out the colours. We're going to kind of put a little bit of sky and a little bit of greenery in here just for fun. So that should be enough. And again um, I've done this on a on a kind of canvas with a bit of texture in it which adds to it but equally it works fine on on cotton as well so that's fine so we're just going to take um, this kind of light green with a nice sharp tip on the pencil and I'm just going to work from the bottom up and make it look like we'll have some grass behind these mushrooms. So 
So I do find the ink tents, the saturation of the colour is really good. So I can make these uh, really nice, bright and cheerful. So that will do us for the green. I'm going to, just over that really lime green, I'm going to take a little bit of the olive. Again, with a nice sharp tip to the pencil. And just work a little bit more detail into my grass. So it's a good idea to have a practice with these beforehand, just to get the feel of them. I'll go quite dark at the base here. Now if you find it's a little bit dry, you can just uh, work back in over the top of that with your water and that just blends your colours out nicely. And take it up. So if you if it does get too wet it might soak into your appliqued fabric as well but I kind of don't mind when these things happen, it just adds to it. So there we go, in a few seconds we've already got a nice base to the, the mushrooms there. So we're now going to add a little bit of sky. Now, this is something that might interest you. I broke the tip off this pencil when I sharpened it, but there's no need to waste the tip because you have just a nice little block of watercolour there. So what you can do is just with your brush use that broken tip. You can also, if when you're sharpening your pencils, even use the sharpenings and uh, you can add in some nice you can kind of throw the the pieces that you've sharpened down and they'll just onto a piece of, of dampened fabric and they'll just kind of spread out in a nice rainbow effect. So you can see just uh, how far this goes. The tip of a pencil that you would normally discard is more than enough To work into to this now. I just kind of love how these are uh, so small but you can you can just uh, make a really nice detailed piece as well. So I think maybe a little bit more intense colour there. Now you'll see I masked this piece down and I've double masked it because I'm going to work in around here but I would quite like it to have a, a nice straight line on the outside. Now it can bleed under the tape a little bit, especially with this fabric because it's it's got a bit of texture to it. So I'm just going to work my tape down so I do get a nice masked edge. But when you do this, you'll get quite impatient because you will want to see the finished article, but I suggest you let it dry completely before you remove the tape. So we're going to work into the stalks here. Now we'll use a slightly different technique for this. Again, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, water 
to these but not too much. I kind of want to get a little bit more detail on my stems. So I've got this uh, kind of quite dark brown that I'm just going to work into here. A bit like our doodle noodles, we're just adding a bit of texture and then I'll just dampen the sponge a little bit. And dab that in. Now I'm just going to go over the dark. I've got a kind of yellow ochre here, and for this you can even dampen the tip of your pencil. And this just gives you a slightly different effect. Again, it's just a case of uh, playing around. Yeah, I think we're about there. That. And uh, the grass is at the front here. I'm just going to pull that green that we put in the background and we'll put a little piece in the foreground of these. down the bottom now. I'm going to just take this sponge and quickly dampen around the outside of this so you can see now that uh, the masking tape is just going to stop the outsides of this from getting too wet. And you could just leave this here, it looks um, perfectly nice as it is but I just thought I would quite like to add a little bit of pop of this pink in the background so again I'm going to just quickly sketch around here with this now you're going to see the sketch lines initially And already you can see just by adding the pink, because we've got some colour here, we've just pulled everything together. And I quite like uh, just maybe adding a little bit of the pink into the stems here as well. And I'm going to go for a slightly deeper colour just around the edge of this and then we can blend it all in. So you can see just with the masking tape there it's given me a nice crisp outline. Again not an exact science depending on how wet your fabric is you might get a little bit of bleed going through but Generally, when you look at it from a distance, you're not going to notice. And it's all part and parcel of uh, doing handmade pieces. So with that sponge, you can just work in your ed edges a little bit just to soften up those pencil lines.
now you can work into it forever but there's always uh, it's always difficult knowing when to stop but you can always stop and let things dry and if you feel it needs a little bit more um, you can always work back into it so that's another good reason to to keep it taped down so again these watercolor pens I'll show you quickly they're kind of the same as the pencils but they're a bit lighter you it's nice if you're working in a really soft pastel piece you can again have the background a little bit to damp and work these in or you can work them on dry and then uh, add a little bit of moisture to soften them out but again these are not colour fast so don't use them on anything that needs to be washed so I think we shall uh, leave it there so I hope you enjoyed that and your designs now already just to pop in a wee frame and uh, again if you have any questions just come past the Facebook group and I'll be happy to help where I can and I'll hopefully see you all again soon.